few weeks, I've heard the following refrain spoken in various ways. I would have never chosen for the world to shut down, but I've longed for it for years. I've needed a good, rich conversation with just one person instead of eight disjointed conversations as I rush from one place, place to another. I've longed for my kids to connect as siblings and rediscover the simple joys of life. I've needed the non-essentials to be stripped away so my pain and anxiety could show me what I really value. Last week, a neighborhood friend of mine posted a picture of his wife on social media with the following caption. Day three of no sports. I noticed a lady sitting on my couch. She seems nice. I think I will talk to her. Many of our creature comforts have been removed, but could this discomfort be a time of opportunity? The phrase post-traumatic growth describes the experience of individuals who experience positive change through struggling through a crisis. These times can help individuals connect with deeper meaning and clarify life direction. Consider the following to help transform our collective crisis into personal post-traumatic growth. First, be mindful. Our routines can lead to a sense of autopilot or mindlessness in which we're less aware of what we're actually feeling, thinking, or doing. Pause today and bring your attention to what you're feeling, especially when you experience a negative emotion. How do you normally cope with this feeling? When you feel insecure or unsafe, do you seek more and more information? You may withdraw, you may make, you may make a certain person into your refuge. You might get demanding or controlling. You may even shut down or distract yourself with activity. Second, work with whatever you find. Use your body to change your experience of a negative emotion. You can reduce the intensity of your anxiety, anger, or sadness by focusing on your breath and intentionally bringing your body into a more relaxed state. Then look for the truth and rehearse it. Today, you can take a step toward change by giving your brain a more accurate message about your identity and your safety. The truth is that I have a loving father who keeps me in his care. And when I know this to be true, my coping strategies are unnecessary. I can rest, I can trust, and I can engage in the moment. Then practice these behaviors in real time. Third, lean into supportive communities. We grow and we feel more restful when we're connected to others in healthy ways, recognizing our common humanity. Social support is a well-documented buffer against mental illness and stress response. None of us can go it alone. Finally, don't let go until God blesses you. In Genesis, Jacob physically wrestled with God during one of his moments of deepest anxiety. He recognized that what he most needed was God's blessing in the midst of his crisis. Dig deep and stay present to the Lord in the midst of your suffering. Don't settle for anything less than his truth and his blessing.